Hey guys, what's going on? I just got back from an awesome fishing trip to Key West, fishing with our friend Cody, who is a charter captain out of Key West, and he is one of the best. I will have his information linked in the description. And if you guys haven't seen my first video from this trip, it will also be linked in the description. But in this video, we're gonna be catching tunas, and then I'm gonna meet you back at the fillet table to fillet this guy up, and then I'll meet you in the kitchen for a sushi night. Fish is busted oh, at the no. boat right there. You already got sharks? No. no came off. Both. Take this one, Brooke. Or maybe oh, not. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a bonita. I don't want to take that. You don't want the bonita? <laughs> Look at this multitasking right there. Got him on up there? In between the legs. Oh, yeah, there was gone. tunas busting. Yeah, he's gone. Two, three. Woohoo! I got a bonita on. Right. Vic's got what a tuna on, Vic? Uh, Working that thing out, there's a lot of big sharks here. You know, tuna. Can you catch your fish? No. Yeah. I feel like this already got sharks. Hey, 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 hey. Just fit. Why can't I just hold hey, them in the boat? Look at these sharks. Ready? Yep. Watch how quick this is going to happen. Alright, let's see it. Oh, there watch. Is. Already. Oh, you're on. Yeah, babe. Just like that. You got a tuna? I saw some beneath our tuna there though. Do I have to go around? Alright, you're over him. You need to go under and she needs to go over. You need to put your rod down. Oh no, other way. Uh, sorry uh, about Alright. Right there. Oh the mine's fired. Oh. Right, drop drop it. Oh. Right up the back. Watch out for the beneath. I don't right know where my drag is. Oh, right there, right there. Here he comes. Here he comes. Throw it in his face, right there. He's gonna eat it. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Did you get a panita? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. This is insane. Look for tuna. Dude. The tuna's looking right up on the boat. Oh my god. Look at this tuna. Look at this tuna. Look at this tuna right here. Oh. Watch, I'm gonna feed him right beside the, the boat. Let me see the tuna that dark That's one. That's a good right mahi. Right yep, down yep, there. Yep. Well, keep her. What are you following the bonita? You see yeah. that? We have nothing rigged for this, huh? No, yeah. nothing. We just broke off on everything. That rod right there. They're completely cooped. It's just in the bonita. Alright, guys, so we are fishing a ledge in like 260 feet of water. We have the bonita chummed up. There's black fins around the boat. A little dolphin came up. And there's, sharks. and there's lots of sharks. No shortage of sharks. You better you better crank that thing in. That's a video she's done. Your tuna right there, I'm looking at. Oh that one that just yeah. shot through? That is a big ass shark right there. There we go! Catch him on plugs right now. Oh, did you get the mahi? Yeah, you did. Yeah? Yeah, Cody got the ball. You got a mahi? Yep. It's funny to watch a shark try to eat this thing. <laughs> That's a there? huge shark. I don't think so. Oh, um, there's a 
A black fin, Cody. Is there? Yeah. Was it an albacore? No, right here, look. Deep. Oh, yeah. Oh, Big old tuna. Yeah. I'm not too concerned about the tuna tails. There's no way to get a bait through. Look at the tuna. Look at the tuna. He's right in there. 20 triple Look at the tuna. Here it comes. Yep. We're, feed, we're feeding tunas, okay? Yeah, but get out, of, tunas. get out of here. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're never going to catch those tunas. It's going to be impossible. I see it down there. Though. I see it too, yeah. A couple big ones. Oh my goodness. These sharks are fired up. We don't do it out here. We can do it out here. There he is. There he comes. Oh, there's a black fin. Oh, that was so sick. Oh, there it was. Let me grab Put it like right, right here by the gun. There's a mahi, a nice mahi. Oh, you got the dolphin. So you call a tight drag. Oh, I got a shark on me. Oh, no. Yeah. That was almost really good, Cody. That was almost a five second mock catch. Really He's probably close enough to gaff now. There we go! That's nice my babe! Than I thought. Heck yeah! Beautiful Brookie with the solid gap shot, thank you. <laughs> nice mahi. Beautiful! Look at them all lit up. Oh yeah. Look at that. So we found a bucket floating and it had a ton of Almaco jacks and Cody wanted to keep a couple of those to use for a grouper bait. And then that's when we had a mahi come up that Victor caught. One Babe's got a black fin, I got a mutton probably. I think that's 30 pound, bro. Yeah, it yeah. is. Thank you, Tom. Is shark fit? Like it, yeah. Your guys are tangled. I think Carl's over you. Yeah, I, I think, think I'm over I you. Think no. Him? No, on the other way. He's under you. Oh wow. Yep. Thank you. I'm making some noise. You think mine's a tuna? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a tuna. All right, guys. Yeah, so. The whole time we were catching those muttons, Cody was throwing out cultures to try to bring the tunas to the boat. And I don't know, within 10 minutes, we had them blowing up behind the boat. You gotta go under me. And we already have, I think, three in the boat. And Carla and I both have one and on two. Pretty awesome fishing today, guys. It's not that calm, but it's pretty nice. Definitely cooperating with us today. Whoa! That's a healthy one. That's a healthy one. Nice. Day. Nice, babe. You can take the cat out. Here we go, guys. Another healthy black fin. We're going to be eating sushi. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to the fillet table. Now, I got this butterball tuna here that I'm going to be filleting. Now, I know you were expecting a fillet video, but this is what happened during the filleting. It just started pouring on our fillet, so it might get a little bit difficult here, but 
This right here is the hardest part of the tuna to get through around that top dorsal fin. Well, it poured and it got too loud, so we're going straight to the kitchen today. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Tonight, Victor and I have some friends coming over and we're making sushi for 14 people. Lots of rolls to be made, so let's get to it. If you see something I didn't make in this video, then that's probably because Victor made it. So you can check out his video in the description. Now let's get to rolling. As for ingredients for your rolls go, there's lots of choices. Tonight I used cucumber, carrots, scallions, avocado, and cream cheese. I always cut everything into long, thin pieces. Keep in mind the size of the seaweed nori roll to give you an idea of the length of the ingredients. The tuna we also cut to size based on the nori roll. Then for the rice we use any kind of short grain sushi rice. Now for the fun part of making the sushi rolls. Here's where I made a mistake. Even though I've done this a hundred times, I put the rice on the wrong side of the nori sheet. There's a shiny side and a dull side. You're supposed to put the rice on the dull side. Does it really matter? I don't think so, but it looks prettier when the shiny nori is on the outside. Now if you remember anything from this video, this is the most important tip I can give you. Keep a bowl of water near you that you can keep dipping your fingers in while spreading out the rice. It'll help tremendously with keeping the rice from sticking on you instead of the nori. Make sure you spread it out nice and evenly to all the edges and relatively thin. You don't want a giant roll with too thick of rice. Add whatever ingredients you want to the edge closest to you and now it's time to roll. I always put my bamboo roller in a plastic bag. It really helps keep things clean. Now take your time and make sure to press everything tightly together. You want everything tight so it sticks together and doesn't fall apart. And I don't mean too tight where you're squishing everything out the ends of the roll. You'll find a happy medium. As with everything, practice makes perfect. Now for cutting the roll. I can't stress how important it is to have a sharp, clean knife. This is the Dexter Shishimi knife. I'll put a link in the video description if you guys are interested. It has to be the best knife I've used to cut sushi. And after every roll, I clean my knife. It'll be near impossible to cut another roll if you don't clean it every time. Now this roll is called an inside out roll, which means the rice is on the outside. I like to sprinkle sesame seeds on after I've spread out the rice. Then the trick here is plastic saran wrap. I've tried it before with wax paper and didn't have as good of results. So I definitely suggest plastic wrap or saran wrap. Now this is for one, to help keep your bamboo roller clean, and two, it helps with cutting the roll once it's actually rolled. So you're going to carefully flip the nori sheet right side down and fill your roll with whatever ingredients you want on the seaweed side. Now for the hard part. While you roll, you have to be making sure to pull out the plastic wrap as you roll. It'll get easier as you do it, I promise. But like with any roll, make sure you roll it tight. Now when you cut it, lay the plastic wrap over the top of the roll. It keeps the roll together better when you cut. Once the whole thing is cut, you can just pull the plastic right off. And now you have your inside out roll. For this roll, I used avocado, cream cheese, and cucumber. You want to use a couple thin pieces of avocado and for the cream cheese it's easiest if you buy the box cream cheese and cut off thin pieces and lay it across the roll. Cream cheese can be slightly overpowering so don't use too much. 
But hey, if you love cream cheese, then layer that baby up. My next greatest tip would be to grab a glass of wine. And I mean a big glass of wine because you will be here for quite some time. I mean, unless you're a professional sushi chef, but rolling enough sushi for a big family dinner definitely takes some time. But believe me, it's so worth it. The next thing I made was seared tuna. I used the thick shoulder cuts of the tuna and sprinkled on black and regular sesame seeds. I took a pan on medium high heat and added some sesame oil. When the pan and oil were hot, I put in my tuna. This style of seared tuna is going to end with the center of the fish completely raw. I let each tuna piece cook on each side for only about 25 seconds before I turned it. Once each side was seared, I took them off the pan. I let them cool down for a few minutes before I began to cut them thin. Ooh, this knife is good. I sharpened it right now. Did I sharpen it good? Yeah. Again, number one thing here is a sharp, sharp knife. I can't lie, this knife was the best I've used for this. You can watch my old sushi videos and see how this worked much, much better. This is the Dexter 8 inch narrow fillet knife and Victor sharpened it before I used it. I probably rolled 15 sushi rolls on my own and I won't lie, it took hours. But get creative, use different ingredients, sprinkle on some masago or spicy mayo. Our favorite part about making homemade sushi is the fact you can put as much tuna in as you want. Some restaurants skimp on the fish in their rolls and they might charge you $15 for one roll but it has a very small piece of fish. So we love making homemade sushi and enjoying it with friends and family. All right, guys, we're ready. Come get your plates. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! Woo! Short arms. <laughs> Again, thank you to Captain Cody for an amazing day of fishing. I will have his charter information linked in the video description if you're interested in fishing with him in the beautiful Florida Keys. And I will have the video from the first half of this fishing trip also linked down below if you haven't seen it already. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in that next video.